Yes to them, I know the capitalism, it's van. Van! Kism. What? It's van. Van! Kism. Cool. Hey y'all, it's Jason, and welcome back to Vanarchism. This is probably the seventh or the eighth video um, at vanarchism.com slash YouTube, but in many ways, this is also the first. This is the beginning. <laughs> and the reason for that is this is the video in which I am going to try to lay out as best I can why I'm doing this at all, what this is about, what is Vanarchism, what's the point of all this. To do that, I need to give you just a little bit of backstory uh, on who I am and how I came to be where I am right now. And uh, believe me when I say I'm going to condense this in an extreme way. The basics are uh, just about, uh, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, my uh, partner of the last five years and I decided to go our separate ways. Extremely amicably, as I'm recording this, we still live together, we still are incredibly close, uh, we love each other. We just are at a place in our lives, partly because of a pretty big difference in our ages, where we wanted different things out of life, and it made more sense for us to go in our own ways and seek the things that we wanted and, and find contentment and be our true selves. Uh, and if we tried to stay together and kind of force our togetherness, it would come at the expense of some of those things. So I think we're both happy with what's ahead of us, uh, even though neither of us can exactly predict what's ahead of us, and we're trying to you know treat each other very compassionately. But one of the things that that meant was that when we made that decision, it meant I all of a sudden was in this place where I didn't really have any particular road ahead or any particular set of circumstances to which I had to conform. Um, I mostly work for myself, uh, hosting a show called The Jazz Session, and until recently a show called A Brief Chat that now has become this Vanarchism project. And I do some part-time radio work and some freelance work for musicians and that kind of thing, but except for the radio, everything I do, I could do from anywhere. And actually, even part of the radio job that I could do, I could do from anywhere. Not the on-air part, but the behind-the-scenes stuff, I could do from anywhere. The thing is that we just moved... Uh, 2,500 miles from almost everyone we know. In, uh, in March, we came to Tucson, Arizona, which is uh, where we are now, where I am as I'm recording this. And we uh, came here to kind of to start a new life together out of some bad things that had been happening in the place we lived before. And of course, we got here just in time for the pandemic to hit. And so, um, you know, our lives were different than, very different than we expected. Uh, for me, one of the more challenging things about coming out here is that both my children live back east. Um, I have a 17-year-old and a 14-year-old sons, both sons, uh, one of whom is a freshman in college and one of whom is a freshman in high school. And uh, the it was going to be a huge trade-off anyway to move this far away. Uh, the trade-off was worth it because of the circumstances we were in in the place we were in and because it seemed quite reasonable when we moved to expect that we'd be able to go back and forth with some frequency. We'd, we'd fly there, they'd fly out here, that kind of thing. And so even though it wouldn't be the same as living in the same town, it would at least allow us to have, you know, a reasonable amount of connection. And when you add that in with texting and phone calls and, you know, uh, Zoom or whatever else. But then, of course, none of that happened. It uh, became impossible to fly. And because we live in Arizona, we're in a state from which it's hard to travel to a lot of other states, particularly eastern states. And so now it's been six months, and I haven't seen my kids at all. So when this thing happened with my partner, it really opened up a place where um, if I wanted to, I could go anywhere. And one of the things I really wanted was to get closer to my two sons. However, one of the challenges of going places is, well, how are you going to live when you get there? Because um, I don't really make enough money from the things that I do to move all of my stuff somewhere to, you know, put the first month's rent, uh, security deposit, you know, all, all that kind of stuff that you have to do when you move someplace. 
I don't really have enough money kind of stored up anywhere or any of that kind of stuff to, to do that. We just did that, and that used pretty much all the assets I had, and I haven't amassed any in the six months that we've been here. At the same time as that was happening, I randomly tweeted one day that I would like to live in a van. I've always had this fascination with people who live uh, in RVs, on boats, essentially in things, in little self-contained worlds that you can move from place to place, uh, generally speaking, either on land or water. Maybe there are people who live in cargo aircraft or something I don't know about, but in any case, that's that's not in my, uh, not my immediate future, and I don't know how to fly a plane. So I've always been fascinated with that kind of a lifestyle, but it always seemed to me that the entry point to RV living was, was extremely high. You know, either you would end up buying something very, very old for, uh, you know, a few grand and sinking a gazillion dollars into it, or the few people I knew who had ever done anything like that had bought very, very expensive um, RVs, and then as a result, uh, you know, it, that, I, like, there's no way I could even pretend ever to have the amount of money that that cost. Then, all of a sudden, after I tweeted this thing about wanting to live in a van, a friend of mine, a, a flugelhorn player named Dimitri Matheny, and that sentence sounds like a lie, but it's the truth, uh, he messaged me and he said, hey, are you serious about this van thing? Because I have all these resources I could send to you. Dimitri doesn't live in a van, but he also has been pretty obsessed with the idea of living in a van or living in an RV or something like that. And he was obsessed with that idea and, unlike me, he took the next step, which was, let me find out what there is to find out about how you do something like that. Well, it turns out, once he sent me these resources and we had a, a Zoom chat about it, that there is a, this whole thing called van life. <laughs> and that there is an entire uh, culture of people out there in the world, not just in the United States where I am, but in the world, who decided for a variety of reasons and at a variety of income levels to leave what is called sticks and bricks and is essentially a fixed dwelling behind and instead to move into some kind of mobile dwelling. And there is a lot of, you know, huge class separation in the way people live in mobile dwellings. I mean, you know, you can have an RV that's as much as a house. You can have a van that's as much as the first house I ever bought, which was a uh, house in a, you know, downtown with a lot of empty housing stock for like 50 grand you can spend that much converting a beautiful cargo van into a place nicer than any apartment i've ever lived in you know that kind of thing and then kind of down at the other end you can spend a couple grand on a minivan that has 150,000 miles on it and you can do a simple conversion of that into a thing you can live in or you can live in your car if you have one you know if so that there's really this this huge divide in the in the kinds of people who end up in the van life lifestyle. And yes, I just made air quotes on a video. So I hope assassins are already on the way to, to kill me. Uh, so this is probably not this won't be followed by any other videos if the universe is just. Well, once he showed me these things, I mean that was it. I was Alice through the looking glass or down the rabbit hole or you know, whatever, up the chimney. I don't think Alice goes up a chimney at any point, does she? Is Alice from Alice in Wonderland also Santa Claus? Discuss. Discuss in the comments below. So, uh, my whole my whole universe was realigned. And then, a few weeks later, my partner and I make the decision to go our separate ways, and all of a sudden, I've just been handed this treasure trove of information about uh, what can be a very a countercultural, you know, kind of anti-capitalist way of living, and I've just I've been essentially given a set of keys to a door that I didn't even know I was approaching that now allows me to do whatever I want. Well, uh, because of the now defunct um, additional unemployment benefits that were going around for a little while when the government made a pretense of caring about whether its citizens lived or died, um, I was able to save up $3,000. Essentially, I just, all of those payments, all of the extra 600 bucks that I got, which I guess was, that's five weeks, right? Um, I was able to save up. And I took that $3,000 and I bought a 1999 
uh, Dodge Caravan, in which I'm currently sitting, named Lenny, after Lenny Bruce, my favorite comedian and one of my only heroes. And uh, I, it's 99 is old, of course. It has 157,000 miles on it, but the guy who owned it before, uh, if you've seen other videos on this channel, you know I've said this before, the guy was a real fanatic about upkeep. And so it's in really, really great shape, and I feel like I really lucked out. And I decided, well, what I'll do is over time, um, you, our lease isn't up for six months, and so it gives me a little time to, to do the conversion of this van into a place to live. And sometime during that time, I'll head out on the road and mostly be based back east, but I can go around doing interviews for the jazz session. I can create some new van-based thing, which is this thing that you're taking part in right now. However, another thing that cropped up around that time was there are a billion van life YouTube channels and they they essentially fall into a couple categories as I say these things out loud I may decide that it's more nuanced than that and remember that I'm painting with a very broad brush uh, you know your mileage may vary but so far what I've seen is on the one hand the beautiful people in very expensive vans in exotic places and by exotic I don't necessarily mean you know that you can still drive to them but you know they may be traveling all of europe and asia by van or they may just be you know going across the u.s in incredibly scenic beautiful ways uh you know they have good mobile jobs that they can do from anywhere and they make more than i've ever made you know that kind of thing and you know their vans are nicer than any apartment i've ever lived in right so there's that kind of video and then there's the other kind of video, which I think is probably best epitomized by the YouTube channel channel Cheap RV Living that uh, Bob Wells started. Um, and then another guy named Foresty Forest, who I, I, both of those I highly recommend. And those are people kind of doing it on the other end of the income stream. So um, on the Cheap RV Living channel, even despite the name, the name is a little bit of a misnomer because it... Um, it doesn't often have anything to do with RVs. It's much more often cars and vans. Often it's people who otherwise would be homeless or, um, you know, folks who are living on 500 bucks a month or, you know, whatever, those that that income stream. And then Forresty Forest is kind of like a guy who was working in a factory, living in a van, and then hiking mountains and on his off days. And enough people started taking interest in the fact that he was hiking mountains and making these great meals in his converted, small, tiny converted minivan, that he, uh, now he can live from the income he gets from his YouTube channel. Which is, you know, kind of a little one-to-one -one exchange of, I appreciate the content you make and here's some money, you know. So you have, broadly speaking, you have the the kind of wealthier end of van life and you have kind of the you know the poorer end of van life uh, poor i am speaking only in the sense of uh, available financial assets not in any other qualitative sense and uh, <laughs> obviously I, I i hope it's obvious obviously i'm on the that end right the the end without a lot of financial assets but since there are already a million youtube channels about van life and boat life and rocket ship life and I live strapped to the underside of a cow life or whatever, since there are already so many of those, what could differentiate this from all of that, right? Is it just going to be another middle-aged white dude who lives in a van traveling around, you know, eating lettuce? And I didn't want to do that. Um, I, I can't escape the fact that I am a middle-aged white dude. I guess I do occasionally eat lettuce, although not iceberg lettuce because... Obviously, it's the work of the devil. So I wanted to just figure out, okay, what can I bring to the world of, of van life and of this kind of nomadic existence and so on and so forth? What, what else do I have in my background or my skill set or my areas of knowledge? I won't say expertise, but just, you know, kind of knowledge that might make a channel a little bit different. And really, the two major streams of thought and action that animate my life are Buddhism on the one hand, Zen Buddhism in particular, and anarchism. Those are kind of the two things that best define the way I look at the world. The the projects I take part in, the the ways I think about making change, and how I view the society that currently exists. 
when I discovered that Vanarchism, which, you know, uh, is an obvious portmanteau of van and anarchism, was available uh, in the social media sense and the, the uh, you know, dot com sense and all that stuff. Well, that seemed obvious, right? That was like, OK, well, <laughs> the universe would like me to talk about these things in the context of living a nomadic existence. And I'm here for it. Because I think that at least at least in I've done a lot of watching of YouTube around van life and a lot of digging and looking at websites and stuff. And I've seen a lot of um, a lot of kind of libertarian thought on the idea of a nomadic lifestyle that doesn't quite make it as far as, um, <coughs> excuse me, libertarian socialism or anarchism. And then, you know, kind of the other end the like the wealthy van life thought. And I thought, well, that maybe what I could do is help talk about, like, what is anarchism? What is mutual aid? Um, you know, what maybe what is Zen Buddhism? How, how do those things inform each other? How can they be applied to living this kind of existence? And then who else can I showcase out there in the world? I mean, within the boundaries of where I can drive in a 1999 Dutch caravan. Who else can I showcase who is also working on these projects, thinking about these things um, or thinking about, you know, kind of related things that maybe they don't live in a van, um, but they are thinking about these kind of systems and how we change them and what we can do um, to to model the world we would like to see uh, at a variety of scales. Although, as far as I'm concerned, mostly at small intentional communities of mutual aid, which is like the thing I think is worth spending your time working on. That all seemed very exciting to me. Um, I've spent most of my, the last 25 years interviewing people, and uh, both on the radio and then for the last 13 years, both on the radio and in podcasts. And I thought, well, here's a thing I could do. I can go out into the universe. I can talk about these topics. I can drive around in a van, and so there'll be some you know, more typical van lifey stuff, I guess. And then I can uh, find other people who are working on these things and interview them in an interesting way and then bring that stuff to you. Um, not just through the medium of a podcast, but through actually going to places and showing you what's happening. And so that's my plan. That is what Vanarchism is about. It is about taking the, the synthesis of anarchism and Buddhism to whatever degree they can be synthesized. Uh, putting that inside the four walls of a 1999 Dodge Caravan, taking it out on the road, and seeing how well we can apply any of these ideas and what ideas we can get from other people who are also working on these topics to start building the world that we actually want to live in. Not waiting for somebody we vote for to do it for us, not waiting for the revolution, not waiting for uh, cataclysm, which is the much more likely agent of change, unfortunately, in these times. But how can we actually right now, us, us, how can we actually start modeling the world we want to live in and building the world we want to live in? And we can do it. It is actually possible to do it. And uh, at, since discovering van life, I'm seeing even other ways of doing it that I never even considered before because my thoughts were always so tied down to, well, all of this is cool and all, but I still have to live in an apartment and pay the landlord or I still have to have a house and pay the bank. And once you start to realize that you don't actually have to do either of those things, it frees up a lot of avenues for what you could do instead and what you could spend your time doing if you didn't have to spend time working to pay the landlord. So that's the deal. Uh, in closing, I will just say that while it is true that I don't have to spend time working to pay the landlord, or I won't once this van life thing actually begins, uh, right now I'm not living in my van yet, but I'm just converting it. But even though that is true, it's it's still the case that uh, most people need some kind of money coming in. There are people who live so off the grid that you know they raise all their own food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's not what I'm going to be doing. So I do need some money coming in, and uh, that's where if you're interested in supporting this project, that's where you come in. It's pretty easy. You just go to Patreon.com/vanarchism. Patreon.com/vanarchism. It's just anarchism with a V at the beginning, and. Uh, you can become a member. Uh, there are three different membership levels. They start at five bucks a month. And uh, one of the things that, you know, this channel is not going to be about is ideological purity because we don't live in a world that allows that. Um, 
I need you to give me money to do the thing I'm talking about, which is about the destruction of a system in which money is necessary. I get it, right? It's There's some, I don't know, hypocrisy involved, but there's just some reality involved in that. This is, channel is not going to be about ideological purity, because I, honestly, I can't stand ideological purity. This channel is going to be about practicality. And in a system where money is necessary to buy some goods, for example, the destructive fossil fuels that power the 1999 Dodge Caravan that I'm going to drive around, right? That's another level of, it's a complicated world. In a world where that system exists, okay, what's the least, what's the least bad thing we can do to provide some kind of monetary exchange so that I can keep going? Well, it's... I think, a direct exchange of, I'm going to create something, and if you like the thing I create, you help me cre keep creating it with your money. Um, you know, obviously, it'd be awesome to get to a place where we're doing this, and you're growing food in your garden and bringing it over to my van, and maybe that will happen, you know? But right now, um, where we're at is a place where I do actually need some cash, and if you have some, you can go to patreon.com slash vanarchism and become a monthly member. You get, you know, all the stuff you always get, right? You get some behind-the-scenes access, you get early access to videos, you get shout-outs on the videos, blah 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 So that's the deal. That's what Vanarchism is about. Um, that is why I'm doing it. That's what I hope to create, a series of videos, uh, I assume weekly, with, you know, some bonus stuff for the members. Uh, about this um, an accompanying website, but really mostly these videos. This taking you directly to where things are happening and talking directly about these concepts to you and answering questions you might have and figuring things out myself because I am no expert. Just taking this trip together with your help and uh, my van. That sounds like something you'd like to be involved in. Awesome. And you can go to uh, patreon.com slash vanarchism to learn more, to become a member. And speaking of which, here are the current patrons. Thank you to them so much for supporting what I do. A thank you to you. Thank you to you for watching. And uh, I love you. A better world is possible. But we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm.